In this video, I'm going to talk about traditional routing. Traditional routing means that we have rotors and we use the rotors, for example, in the edge of our branch or our data center. Okay, look at the picture. For example, in this picture, you see two traditional rotor Cisco 7604. In a traditional rotor, we have three most basic components, three main components. First, I.O. module. Second, control plane module. And third, switch fabric. What is the I.O. module? The I.O. module, as you know, is the data plane. This is the data plane. Data is going to the I.O. module and after routing, forwarded to the another interface and another router. This is the data plane, one of the fundamental planes. And then we have a control plane module that this is the control plane module. And you know that CPU and routing tables and routing protocols and iOS and administration is doing in this module okay we have cpu for example and routing table rib rib means routing information base and another administrative components in this module rib abbreviation of routing information base okay and also we connect io module to the control plane module with switch fabric if you want you can draw this picture look at this picture we have control plane control plane and data plane and between them we have a link for example a link and the link name is switch fabric okay control plane as you know should take routing packets and another control packets and after that create the routing table you know that two types of packets exist in the network one type is routing packet for example bgp ospf packet eigrp packet and another routing packet and second type is the user data or rotate packet rotate packet rotate packet means for example ftp packets HTTP packets or other packets that users send in the network. Okay, two types of packet go to IO module routing and rotate. If the packet blue is routing, red is rotate. If the packet is routing packet with switch fabric, you can punt from IO module from the data plane this packet to the control plane and as you remember we have switch fabric and with switch fabric from data plane packet is punted to the control packet for example bgp packet bgp or ospf or eigrp or another type of control packets is punted to the control plane to the processor or CPU of control plane and after some calculation on the routing packet we have we can have RIB or routing information base in the CPU after the routing infor information base table is populated the most fundamental parts 
and most useful parts are downloaded to the data plane, to the FIB. You know that we have a table on the data plane me, that we name it FIB or forwarding information base. Okay. After the control packets are punted to the control plane and after the calculation on these control packets, these routing packets, RIB first completed and the result of RIB, the useful part of, part of RIB downloaded to the FIB in the data plane. Okay. And FIB is used to route or forward the packet. Okay. Here we have FIB forwarding information base. This is the table for forwarding the packets and RIB is here. FIB is here. The information from RIB downloaded real time in real time to FIB. Okay. And after that, when we, when we receive a packet, a routed packet, a user data packet in the FIB, in the data plane from IO module with the, with regard of destination IP normally with regard of destination IP and FIB, the outgoing interface is selected. For example, traffic is coming in GE02, this interface, and after routing, traffic is going to going out from gigabit 06, for example. And the traffic is forwarded to this interface. This is traditional routing. Both of the routing packet and routed packet is coming from is coming to data plane but one type of packet names routing packet punted to control plane and another type routed packet compared with the FIB and after that forwarded from outgoing interface okay you know the role of IO module now and the role of control plane module and also switch fabric. All of these three components are in the same box. The name of that box is rotor. Okay, this is traditional routing. And because of that, we have three main components. IO module, data plane, control plane, control plane module, control plane, and also switch fabric that connects these two plane together. Okay. And after the packet forwarded, the packet is going to another router or destination, and then another time compared with the FIB of next router and then forwarded from suitable from interface going to the destination. This is the traditional routing. Okay. Now we have some important point. The first point is that all of these three components are in the same box. This is the first. And the second is that we have CPUs in the control plane and data plane. One CPU in the control plane, one CPU in the data plane. The performance of CPU in the control plane doesn't impact the performance of CPU in the data plane. The CPU in the control plane, the general CPU, the main CPU, is used to build 
for example, routing table. And the CPU in the FIB is used to forward the packet. You know this. This is the ASIC or application specific CPU. It's application specific IC or application specific CPU. Okay. And the next important point is that the relation between the, F, the data plane and control plane is built with switch fabric. Switch fabric is an important is an important part in the traditional router working. You know this. Okay. If we ha we have two routers, we have two series of control plane and data plane. And also we should repeat the process of routing two times two rotor two times three rotors three times six thousand rotors six thousand times this is this is an important point in the traditional routing this means that if you change a link in the network the routing table of all routers should be changed for example, look at here. First, we have a link here connected to gigabit 04 and the IP address is 100/24. This is the link connected to gigabit 04 of router 1. Okay. If this link is turned off in router 1, router 2 and router n calculation in cpu and in control plane should be done and all of the routing tables and after that all of the fibs should be changed you know this and this is the convergence okay and because of that the overall cpu usage in all over the network increases this is the traditional routing this is the problems in the traditional routing okay another important point is that the relation between the planes is used is down with a, a proprietary packets cisco down this relation with the proprietary rules and proprietary packets this means that all of the works that is down in the box is proprietary we don't know about the detail of that cisco knows this for example the relation between fib and rib is that if a routing packet is received in the fib in the data plane in the io module the data plane or io module should punt the packet to the uh, to the for example control plane to build to be used to build rib and after the rib complete convergence the download from rib to fib should be down we know this but the details isn't important for us and the detail is a proprietary mechanism because it is in the box all of the things in the box is proprietary but the detail of routing between devices out of the box for example between routers should be a standard for example we use ospf or BGP or other protocols. These protocols use a standard rules and everything is known for everyone. Okay? All of the communication inside of the box in the pot in the box is proprietary and all of the communication outside of the box is open standard is known to another parties. Okay. 
This is traditional routine. And also, I want to remember you that we also have a management plane. You know this. Management plane is a plane that is used for management. For example, with management plane, we can connect to this device with telnet or SSH or other protocols. We use these connections for management. Because of that, we have management plane, we have data plane, we have control plane, and also we have switch fabric. All of these components are in the same box. Here is one question. Okay, do we need to address the, for example, IO module and control plane module to find them? IO module is needing to address how IO module can find control plane module? No, it's not needed. Why? Because IO module and control plane module are in the same box. Because of that, we don't need that address, for example, IO module, that how can it find the control plane module. IO module and control plane module, both of them are in the same box. And because of that, it's easy to find together. Okay, very good. Why I talk about traditional routing in the ST1 course? Because we should compare the ST1 routing, the advanced routing with traditional routing. And after the comparison between these two methods of routing, we can find benefits in the ST1 routing over traditional routing. Because of that, we should remember all of the important and relevant things in the traditional routing. Okay, don't forget that all of the components in the same box, we don't need addressing bit between of these components because of because all of this in the same box. If a change occur in one link, the CPU usage, the calculation in the control plane should be down in all of the switch. And finally, we have control plane module, data plane module, management plane module, and module, and also switch fabric. All of these definitions means traditional routing. And we compare traditional routing with ST1 routing with advanced routing in the next video. Okay, first review the components that I mentioned in this video and then go to the next video. In the next video, we talk about ST1 routing or distributed routing. This is this is this method, method of traditional routing, is a non-distributed routing. Routing is down per device. Okay? In ST1 routing, in advanced routing, we experience some type of distributed routing. Distributed routing has benefits over traditional routing. We should talk about this and we will, re we will understand the benefits of ST1 over ST1 routing over traditional routing.